Hey everyone, this is Corey with iMod.Systems. So today we have a copy of Pokemon Blue in for repair. I purchased it off of eBay and on the listing it stated that it was having intermittent issues where it was crashing in menus and uh, freezing. So uh, I figured I'd pick it up and see if I can figure out what's going on. So we're going to take a look at that today. I'm just going to pop it into the Game Boy real quick and see if we could duplicate the issue. and it doesn't appear that I can duplicate it. So I'll put it up on the screen, uh, what I've been able to find so far. I've been doing a little bit of testing um, off of recording here. I've had it connected to my computer in a capture card and I'll put it up on the screen uh, showing what I have found so far. So I'm just going to take you through this repair process and I'm going to show you some do's and don'ts and uh, the ways that I troubleshoot a game uh, when I get something in like this. Let's get the game open and we're going to start taking a look at it. Okay, so we have the game open here and we're just going to give it a quick visual inspection. So from this view here, uh, you know, we could see some areas of uh, concern and nothing too serious. Uh, what I'm talking about is over here, just above the edge connector. You can see some dark spots here. So if you take a look at the, uh, the inside of the actual cartridge shell, there's like this raised lip right here. And that actually makes contact with this area of the board, just above the edge connector. And repeated inserting and removing the game from uh, your Game Boy can actually cause wear if there's any dust or any debris. Uh, it can wear down these traces and cause them to break. In the case of this repair, I'll show you underneath the microscope. Even though this looks kind of bad, um, but it's actually, it's good. There's another issue that's going on here. So I'll take you through it and show you how to repair it. So let's get it under a microscope. All right, so we have the board under the microscope now, and we're just gonna give it a quick visual inspection. So that area that I was speaking about before, just above the edge connector, you can see over here, we have you know, some corrosion just from either it making contact with the shell, or it could be just like minor liquid damage or just abrasions. But uh, basically what we're looking for, we're looking for any broken traces. Um, this spot over here is not of any concern. We could just seal that up later on. But if I turn this at an angle, you know, we could see that that area looked bad, but we have an obvious visual path for that trace. So there isn't any damage here. So this looks all good. Um, so what else I like to do is I just like to take a look around the board, see if there's any other trace damage. You know, we have another spot over here that's not really concerning. This uh, trace over here is perfectly fine. I'm looking at like the gold ring on the vias to see if we have any liquid damage or if it's rotted out. Uh, we don't see anything there. So visually, the front side of the board looks perfectly fine. I'm going to flip it over and we're going to take a look at the back side real quick. Start from the bottom and work our way up. Looks like we have a little spot over here. Sorry. That was just a piece of dirt. It's perfectly fine. A little bit of gunk over here. That's probably just dirt. We can clean that up later. 
and the backside looks fine. So let's get it connected up to the board holder and I'm gonna show you another test that I like to do on these. All right, so we're connected up to the board holder and the next test that I like to do when I'm inspecting a game that's having intermittent issues like this, I like to give the chips on the actual game um, all the legs a nudge test. So on older Game Boy games, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was an issue at the factory, but um, sometimes the legs can come loose on the board. If they may look like they're uh, making contact, they may look solid, but they're actually not. So I'm gonna start over here with the SRAM and I'm very, very gently just gonna give this a nudge. I'm not using a lot of pressure at all. So you can see we don't have any movement here so far. Everything's still solid. Okay, that part of the chip is good. I'm just gonna rotate the board around. We're gonna do the other side. And again, we're just very, very gently. We're not using a lot of pressure at all. It doesn't require it. You'll know right away if something's loose. Okay, so all of the legs on the SRAM are good. We're gonna flip over to the ROM now. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. And it looks like this leg is actually loose. See it moving there? Let's get zoomed in, I can show you. See that? So from the top, it looks like it's making a connection but we could see when we gently push on it that it's wiggling. So we know that this is an issue here. This should be solid like the next, this one right here. I'm giving it the same amount of pressure and it's not moving. I'm just gently tapping on this guy. Like I even bent it out. Very gently tapping and it moves. Let's get this back over. And that's what I was talking about. It does not require a lot of pressure when you're testing these. Okay, we're back on. So let's finish testing the rest of the ROM now. I'm just gonna make note of that first pin there that we're gonna have to touch up. So we hit the second one already, let's move on to the third. Rotate our board around. Let's do the other side now. Okay, so everything else is solid. So now we're gonna go back in and we're gonna repair this uh, top leg here and that should resolve our intermittent issue with this game. So let's get uh, set up for that and get that done. All right, so we're zoomed in nice and tight here and we're just gonna touch up this one pin very simply. So I'm gonna grab my iron, just gonna heat it, wait for the pad and the leg to flow, tap in a little bit of fresh solder and that's it, we're done. Simple as that. Now we didn't have to needlessly blast this entire board with a ton of hot air and we didn't have to touch up everything. You know, we just used our tweezers and we very gently went around and we touched everything, uh, tapped all the legs on the chips and we figure out exactly which one we needed to repair. So it's as simple as that. I'm just gonna grab a Q-tip real quick and clean up that flux. There we go. So 
So that's that. Let's get it back assembled and te we'll test it in our Game Boy again. All right, so we have our game partially assembled. We have it back in the back shell. We're just gonna pop it back in the Game Boy and just give it a quick test. Now, one of the things that I noticed when I was testing it, when it was loading a new game, it was freezing. And also sometimes when we loaded a previous save, uh, just like getting it in and out of the menus, the game would freeze as well, so. So this looks good. Wait for the Pokemon to load. Cool. Let's load up our save. and this looks like it's running great. So this is a successful repair. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in.